Hi everybody, this is Madonna from Mad Bees Quilt and Sew, and as I promised, I wanna to get to the last part of binding. So we've squared up our quilt, we have um, created our binding, and now I have my binding sitting here. So this is the part that a lot of people skip, and I do. Um, it is just kind of um, putting your binding around the outside of the quilt, kind of testing it out to see where it's going to fall because you don't wanna wind up with having one of your joiners at one of your corners. So we just kind of set it in place, give yourself a pretty good idea of where it's going to go so that that way you don't wind up with the joiner sitting on your quilt. Okay, so where's my joining part here? We should be getting pretty close there. Okay, so there's one there, that's perfect. It won't be right at my corner. And because this is a square, once I know that one of these is pretty close to there I'm going to be able to tell that the rest of these are not going to fall on my corner so I'm going to start to sew now so two things one I'm going to use my quarter inch foot and I'm going to sew this on at a quarter of an inch but secondly I need you to look at your machine as you're doing this my machine I know that it's okay for me to do this and it doesn't push much but some machines the um, presser foot presses down heavier and you're going to get your fabric to not stay in place. You'll start to see where the top fabric is scooching on you. You can pin in place at this point in time, or you can just um, free form it, okay? Um, if you're going to pin in place, that's awesome. That is your decision. Just make sure that you leave enough fabric in the corners so that I can show you how to manipulate that. So to start off, I never wanna start right at the very tail of my fabric. I am going to give myself a full um, nine inches of extra fabric there. Once I've got that figured out, so I'm right about there, and I'm not smack dab in the center either, otherwise my eye is going to go right to it. And I could even come down a little bit further. I'm gonna set this underneath my machine, and I am actually going to back tack one or two stitches there, just so that I give this a little bit of security as I'm playing with it when I go to join my binding together. So. Let's move around the corner here, Deanna, and we'll get started. So I've picked my binding up. I'm gonna set it on my side here. I usually just um, kind of like set it, I have fortunate, I have a drawer right here. I set it in my drawer. Um, there are tools to be able to hold this for you, but whatever works for you. I have got the raw edge of my binding right against the raw edge of my quilt, and I'm matching those up nicely. Again, I'm starting back far enough. I'm going to put this underneath my machine and I am going to stitch forward. I have my um, diagonal seam tape on there and I'm going to line up right with that and right with my quarter inch foot. And you can see that's all in a really nice line. And I'm really watching right here so I can see that tape. Hit the gas pedal here forward a stitch or two and back a stitch or two. Okay, just give yourself a little tack there. And I'm going to hold this nice and straight all the way out to my corner. I'm barely holding on with my um, left hand and I'm just letting this pull through nicely. You can see a little bit of a bubble that's happening there. It's not much, so I'm not feeling like I need to change to my walking foot. If it was any more than that, I would be changing. We got a little wide there, still okay. Now, here we go. I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna make sure my needle's in my down position. This little mark here on my foot is my quarter inch mark. Maybe if I point here. This little mark right here and this little bar across the center there is a quarter of an inch from the needle. So that's a quarter of an inch. I want that mark to be even with my batting. So I can kind of visually see there's my batting. So I'm gonna go one, two, oh, yep. Uh, should I do one more? Nope, one looks good, okay. Leave your needle down, pick up, turn, and point right out to the tip of that batting. So I'm lining up that batting with the red part of that line now. Put my foot back down and I'm going to sew off the tip, straight off. And I always do a couple extra stitches 
end up with my needle up. And that gave me that really nice twisty bit right there, which I love. Clip. I left to my tail. Now, I'm gonna turn my quilt. I'm gonna set it all in my lap. And look at it, it's almost doing what it needs to do right now. Okay, I hear a lot of people who want to flip and turn and pull and all that. I'm going to line up my edge again. So I've got it just sitting in place. I'm going to take a pin, oops, and I found a big, huge pin here today, and it's already lined up. I put the pin right up in there, and I just take the pin to make it into a nice straight line. That's all you have to do. If you do the first step, see, I don't have to do this fold back and fold forward. I line up this corner here, line up this edge, easy peasy, and you're not holding it taunt, just lined up. And if you want, you can put a pin there, Put a pin in here all the way through and pull on it. It pulls that really nice and straight for you and you're ready to sew it down. It's making a beautiful mitered corner. It's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna put it back underneath and I start right at the edge. Line it all up. I do not back tack when I'm here. I don't need to. Hold my tail ends. Sew it on. I'm going to sew this full side and I'm going to sew pretty quickly here so we can do one more corner. Come on, Madonna, you can do it. A lot bigger quilt than you realize. <laughs> There's something so relaxing about watching it go, though. Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, those of you who know me well, you know I sew every day, so there must be something relaxing about it. So again, like I said, if it's bunching up more than that, it means your presser foot pressure is holding down tighter. Not bad. You may want to switch to your walking foot. I'm coming upon my um, corner here. I slow down my speed. I watch as I'm getting close. And one more. Okay, I like where that's sitting. I can see the, the lump in there. I'm gonna pick up, I'm going to turn. I'm gonna sew right to that point. Sew to that point. Do a couple more stitches. Pull it up, uh, pull it up. Leave that twisty, trim that off. Turn my whole quilt. Grab my pin, line it up first, get it all lined up, and all you're doing is just turning it. And it doesn't have to be exactly where it's sitting. You're just turning it right now so that that way it's going there. Grab your pin, put it in there, lay that out flat, make sure it's nice and even over here. This is where it really matters. And see, it just, it evens itself out. It knows what it's supposed to do. And if you look at it, it should be able to sit up on a point and it lays right down and in there put it under your machine and start sewing again. It is not a hard process at all. And I start right at the end there and we're ready to go again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna come to the other end here because I wanna show you how to join this and then I'm gonna show you how to attach it. We're gonna come way over here. Where's my starter? Okay, we're gonna get right at the ender here. Should we overlap? Okay, perfect. So I'm cheating, okay? Right now, all I wanna be able to do is show you how to do this. So I'm gonna pretend like I've sewn all my sides. I'm coming right over here. 
I'm about ready to end and you can see I've left myself a good 12 inches here. I'm going to back tack two or three stitches just to hold it in place. Pull it out. So all of my binding is attached. I now have two tails. What do I do with these? How do I do this? So I have a super easy trick on how to do this. Do you want to come onto this side, Deanna? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my binding is looking all beautiful and I've got my two tails here. I'm going to trim off a bit of my tail. Okay, I've got a little piece here. I'm going to set it on top of my fabrics, okay? So what this does is this gives me the exact width that my binding was cut at. I am going to open it up. I'm going to lay it on top of my binding strips. So right now I have a bottom strip and that's laying down there. And this is a little bit hard to see because we're all the same colors here. Okay, bottom strip. Here's my piece of fabric on top. The bottom one I'm going to cut on the left hand side, then I'm going to put the top one across and I'm going to cut it on the right hand side. So first we're going to do the left hand side. Set this down, make sure it's all nice and smooth, no lumpy bumps in it. We're going to take the top piece, we're going to lay it down. All of this should be smooth. Check to make sure that that's still sitting right on the end there. And we're going to cut off the top piece. So the bottom piece gets cut off on the left. The top piece gets cut off on the right. But it's exactly the width of our strip. So we can see nicely that that's that and that's that. Easy. We're going to move that out of the way. We are going to get rid of our junk. That's just garbage. We're going to open this up. Open one up, open the other one up. They need to be sewn together, right sides together. So if you just open them and put them together, right sides together, that's our first step. I then grab this whole big clump here, okay? And I stick a pin in it, because then I don't have to keep fighting with it. And it stays for me nicely. Okay, now I have this sitting just like this, okay? So they've, they've kissed each other really easy. Take one of them. I don't care which one and I don't care which direction you go and turn it. Okay, so they're kissing. Take one of them and turn it. Doesn't matter which one. Just so you wind up with one on the top, one on the bottom. We always sew across the waist, not through the crotch. So we're gonna go from point to point. I'm gonna put a pin in it. Now there are many of you that will need to draw a line. Draw a line from this point on the um, right hand piece to this point on the left hand piece. Draw a line. If that makes you happy and that makes you feel comfortable, go for it. And you're going to sew directly on that line. So I'm gonna put a pin in the middle. Again, I have that wonderful tape on my machine. So I'm gonna set this underneath here now. And I'm sewing from this point to this point. Look at how that point is sitting right on there. And because I've pinned this, it makes it so it stays looser for me. It's not so ugly to be dealing with. So line up my point down there, line up my point to my needle. I can be happy with both of those. I'm going to set this down and I'm going to stitch right along there. If I keep looking at that tip right there, I can see it's still on my red line there. and That makes me super happy. Perfect. Take it out from underneath there. Trim the threads and watch. It's like magic. Take the pin out, pop it open, and it fits exactly into the space that you need it to fit. I'm going to go into here and trim this out. You can use your scissors or your rotary cutter. 
we will go to the iron then and press that little seam open and that way you won't have a lump where it's sitting so that'll fit right back and in into there we pressed it or we pretended to press it because we're live on video so we just have to keep going we're going to put it back under our machine and look at i mean it fits in there you don't even know that we put a seam in there right back under i started right where i back tacked i'm just going to go ahead and stitch right over this connect it up go ahead and we're done okay so here we are we are um, right here and I'm gonna get rid of that little thread there okay so what I've got now is I'm ready to actually do the next step and the next step of this goes with the iron <laughs> gotta wake it up um, and what we're going to do is we're going to press glue and machine sew. So that is your decision. Um, hand sewing is another way to do this, but we're doing a rapid fire um, binding class here. So um, I have got my quilt ready and I have seen people who go in and trim off this corner. I don't like to. I like to make sure that it's wrapped tight and I want that corner to be full of batting and full of product. I do watch though. So as you can see, one of these edges here, it's going in this direction. So the one on the back, I like it to go the opposite direction. So when I fold it over, this one's on top. Now I want this side on top. I hope that makes sense. So I'm folding it over. And then this one here is gonna be the second side folded. And what that does is give me a really nice square corner on it. So I've got the fold here and then I've got the fold, whoops, get in there, here. And by doing them opposite, it really lays really nice and it's not quite so bulky to deal with. So, um, Deanna, I think we can move to the ironing board. Let's move on over. And I just have to rotate my chair. Well, kind of <laughs> rotate my body. <laughs> Hi, everybody, I'm over here now. Okay probably would have been a good idea to get a rolling chair, but why, yeah, you know? Okay, so when I first started um, owning the store, I never did this. I thought this was like the worst thing in the whole world and people gluing their quilts. Well, you're just gluing it in place to hold it. You're not gluing it in place to keep it glued. Many people like to use the plastic clips this is just an alternative way to do it. And it works great for me because I can put a binding on, get it glued in place and let it sit for four months. And it's not keeping all of my clips tied up for four months. I can um, get all my binding put on, put it glued it on, glue it on and go in the car and I don't have clips that I have to worry about. So it really is just another method. It is not, I can't say that it's the right method or the wrong method, but it's a method that works for me. So no matter what I'm doing, I always put my binding on my front. I like the look of that. I'm going to then press it so it goes to my back. So the first initial press that I do is on the front side. So it's sitting just like so, and I am going to take, because no matter what I do, it wants to stay up like that. And if I'm turning this without pressing it, I'm fighting it, and I'm fighting it quite a bit. Look at, I lined up my X's right there, Deanna. Did you see that? I made them look perfect. Oh, wow. <laughs> there were three right there, that's it. Okay, so I use an iron without any steam, and I go in and I go all the way up to that corner. And I kind of want to push in that corner a little bit. Um, and I'm just pushing away from myself when I do it. And all I'm doing is just creating a little bit of a memory to it so that that way it knows which way it's supposed to go. And you can see when I pushed into that corner, it really tightened that up in there. And that's what we were looking at a minute ago. And you can see how the um, left hand side is sitting actually on top of the right hand side. So when I flip it over to glue it, See, now it's sitting in a nice bowl going this way because I've pressed it nicely. So 
we have it going one direction, so now I want it to come the opposite direction. So I'm gonna do the right-hand side, and then the left-hand side will come over the top. And see how pretty and square that sits then? And it puts a nice point on there. Okay, so I'm going to glue this in place. This is Roxanne glue, it's called Glue Based It. Um, it comes in several different types of containers, but it comes with this real long needle nose on it and a rubber cap. We have found that if you store it with the cap on, upside down like this, it's ready to use all the time. We actually, um, oops, put the cap back on. We actually have found that if we store them in the top of a spool of thread, it stays the best. I mean, it like works so nice. The Aurifil threads are awesome. An empty spool works great. So when you put this on, you're actually just going to, man, I left a mess here. You're actually just going to draw a line with it and it comes out kind of in a solid line and it's, you can see how little I'm using. And as it sits for just a half a minute, it kind of beads up on its own. And this is about how much I do at a time. So I give myself a nice line of it put my cap back on, get it out of the way, and then I just start to pull it over. And I pull over and press. It is not crunchy. It's easy enough to be able to um, put your needle right through it, but it stays in place for me. I go ahead, I drop a dot of glue right in the corner there so that that way it's going to stay, and then I continue along this side. And you can see, I just move quickly along and beat it into place and ready to go. Make sure you clean up all your threads next time, Madonna. That would look much nicer for the camera. This one's a goober one, that one goes through the quilt there. Okay, so we're gonna turn this corner. This glue on your skin just peels off really nicely. It just rolls right off. And Now, look at, whoops, we got a, a yucky goober on there. That's off the iron, yuck. Okay, so we're glued in place and look at how pretty that looks. Super professional. Now's the time where you can hand sew or you can uh, machine sew. Because my binding is actually thinner on the front than it is on the back by using a quarter of an inch, if I stitch in the ditch right along here, I will be able to catch that and I'll catch it with a nice straight line. That is one of the major pros to gluing it in place. I can see it now and correct it. I'm not waiting until I'm under the machine because I'm pulling it and being able to fix it. So I can take this to the sewing machine and sew it down or I can hand sew it in place. Um, that's what I have for today, guys. I hope that you really feel like you can do a binding now. So the things to watch and rewatch is how to put your two pieces together and don't be afraid to glue. Well, we had three really good things. Mm -hmm. The first one is how to do your corners. Mm -hmm. The corner thing works so easy. Remember to line up your second side and that way it'll automatically almost make that mitered corner for you. A little pin in the corner. Then secondly, how to put your two pieces together. Just remember they come up together one turns and it doesn't matter which one of them you turn you're just going to turn it just a quarter of a turn and then if you remember to sew across the waist on there it will be perfect and then lastly gluing in place it really does make for a fast easy binding for you i hope you got a little smarter i hope that i gave you enough information about your binding and you're ready to go everybody have a great day remember it's a place you want to be